Hey guys, we're at Rocky Cycle in Surrey, British Columbia. And I've spent some time with Sean here, bike expert. You've been in the business for like 16 years or something? Yes, correct. Uh, so awesome, lots of cool bikes around here. One of the things I've always struggled with is like free hub body versus free wheel, cassette. What does that mean? So I've, I've tried to just like really zoom in on that for you. So this was the, the original, kind of the old school uh, where you, you need a free wheel setup, meaning there's no free hub body, nothing freewheeling about this hub right here. You have to thread onto the hub and then in the center of this free wheel, which has a bunch of sprockets on it, there's this mechanism that spins. So the spinning portion is on this free wheel. To me, it's so confusing. I wanna call this a cassette because it has all these sprockets on it, but it's a free wheel. Does that make sense, guys? Now, the thing is, by having that, that freewheeling mechanism built onto these sprockets, it means that you can't get a really, really tiny, uh, smallest gear ring right there. It, the, the most standard size you'll see, the most common is 14 tooth. But over time, I mean, that's, that's not as small as say 11 teeth and having a smaller uh, ring here means that you can pedal more comfortably at high speeds. And so as companies want even smaller, like 10 tooth, you, you need different mechanism. Uh, another reason that they've uh, moved to this free hub body cassette is because this axle right here, the bearings and the support for this axle are right here. And see how that's closer to the center of the hub versus here, they're able to move the bearing and the support further out from the center. So it builds strength, which is, which is awesome, uh, especially if you're doing some mountain biking or you've got a heavier rider or something like that. So this is really where the industry has been moving. It's neat to see these up close like this. So, you know, again, free wheel, it has the spinning mechanism built into the cluster. This one, the spinning mechanism, free hub body is built onto the hub and onto that, that wheel setup. And then we have cassettes. So the smallest you can go with a cassette is 11 tooth. And most common I see is like 11 to 32, sometimes 11 to 36. Uh, this one's 11 to 34 and it just slides right on. And this is the portion that spins. You can hear it very nice. So those are the two most common, but you did hear me mention some of the mountain bikes, especially they're, they're like, okay, we want more than just 11 sprockets and an 11 tooth being the smallest. We want like 12 sprockets and we want 10 teeth. And so there are some new technologies out here. What's that called, Sean? This is called SRAM XD drive made by SRAM. They started uh, introducing XD drive since 11 speed. And wow. Shimano also introduced a new spline system called MicroSpline. MicroSpline. And they didn't have 12 speed until late this year. Wow. And now they have 12 speed and they also have 10 tooth as well. Oh, okay, and so when he's saying 12 speed, that's each one of these like the number of sprocket sprocket yes. rings. Okay, there's 12 of them versus 11. They're able to fit a lot in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times I'm, I'm also seeing different like hub spacing. Mm -hmm. So we'd go from, what was the most common, 135? 135 by 10 is the most um, traditional mountain bike spacing. Um, about uh, six, seven years ago, they came out with 142 by 12 and boost is 148 by 12. Wow, okay, yeah. so one they went from 135 to 142 and now to 148 and does that part of what allows you to have those sprockets there wow that's that's a lot and these are still using the free hub body correct with a cassette that slides onto it so again all the mechanisms and things are built onto that that hub and, and the wheel itself and then the cassette just slides onto it awesome any other that's thoughts right. feels like we nailed it that's that's all, all about it